Like and subscribe. The Facts Drone. Right here are the first two plays LeBron James made in Team USA's most recent game against Germany. Is everyone seeing what I'm seeing? I was not expecting to make another video about this senile man. A man who right now should have his feet up in Turks and Caicos, sipping margaritas and enjoying the billion dollars that he has made over his career. But instead, he is 39 years old and still terrorizing the basketball world. LeBron James open for three! It's nearly the 10-year anniversary of this infamous tweet, and we still have no signs that this cyborg, this alien freak of nature is slowing down anytime soon. Because now for the second game running, it was 50-year-old LeBron James who led USA in points with 20, to go along with six boards and four assists. Which means over his last two games, both of which have been separated by just a couple of possessions, LeBron has recorded 43 points, 12 rebounds, and 10 assists in just around 40 minutes of action. So pretty much a 40-point triple-double on slightly more minutes than he would average in the NBA. And he's done it on over 70% from the field. I'm waiting for next year's version of that tweet titled, LeBron James is 40 years old, when will this end? And we can look back on that tweet in another 10 years time and laugh, because this guy might legitimately be eligible for his pension before we actually see him slow down. But getting back to the game, those first two buckets I showed you were the only shots he made in the first half of the game. So once again, it was a second half special from him, just like the game against South Sudan, and he showed off everything in his bag. Look at him here on the back down against ice and the fadeaway jumper. A couple of minutes later, both bigs go under the screen and pick your poison because he's coming off a season in which he shot 41% from three for the Lakers. But this was all nothing in comparison to the final quarter, or more specifically, the last four minutes of the game. Because when you're as old as LeBron, you can't dominate any every minute of the game. So why not just dominate the minutes that matter? And he did just that. Here he is on the Embiid back down, making a smart and quick cut to the rim, casually finishing with his left, before going down the other end and turning into a cornerback, picking off the pass. And he wasn't done there, because five seconds later, Steph Curry finds him running the floor and look at him slow down with just a slight hesitation to free Schroeder before stepping through for the finish. And he just continued to make play after play. But with the game still only separated by one point and 90 seconds remaining, give it to the guy who should be playing bingo instead of cooking world-class athletes, and he'll knock down the clutch three for you. And just to finish things off, like he did against South Sudan, it was LeBron James with the winning bucket, bullying Dennis Schroeder before the clever footwork and the finish around the rim. So in a span of four minutes, LeBron James scored nine of USA's 11 points, putting a team full of first ballot Hall of Famers on his back at 45 years old. LeBron James. Come on. He's still doing this at 45. And like last game, it wasn't just LeBron James who dominated for Team USA. Anthony Davis was good yet again, Drew Holiday did Drew Holiday things, and there can never be enough good words said about Drew because he is just a special player. You also got one of the plays of the game from Devin Booker, with him initially playing great defense on Franz Wagner to get the strip, before then going down the other end and doing this. But amongst all the good performances, there was one other guy who had a really good game. A guy who everyone, including myself, has criticized. But Joel Embiid decided to look closer to the MVP-level player. We know he is in this game against Germany. And that means he was doing it on both ends of the floor. Like on this play, where Germany run that little brush screen to get Bonga going downhill. And even with that burst of speed, Embiid has the ability to recover and absolutely destroy that shot at the rim. That's just a violent block which led to a blockbuster highlight. Edwards, the cross, the and it wasn't necessarily the Joel Embiid that we've seen in Philadelphia, but we shouldn't expect 100 elbow touches and post-ups a game on a team with so much star power. Instead, he was doing all of the little things. Like on this play where he sets the initial screen for Steph, who gives it up to Booker, and Embiid flashes to the elbow, 
before the little soft touch to drop it in. Or on this play in transition, where he's trailing Holiday for the casual three-pointer. And you've got to give Embiid credit, because it was clear through the first few games that Anthony Davis and Bam Adebayo were having more impact, because they were able to play within the offense more efficiently and then defend at a higher level. Joel still looks a bit off the pace defensively, but if he can give you 15, 8, and 5 in 25 minutes to go along with some rim protection, you aren't going to get many complaints. With that being said, it wasn't all perfect for USA, because once again, it was a game that went right down to the wire. And whilst Germany are a great team, from a talent perspective, it shouldn't require late-game heroics from LeBron to beat them. The difference is, Germany played with more intensity, attacked the boards more ferociously, and were sharing the ball more. If there is one major problem we've seen from Team USA, it's a problem that we all could have anticipated, and that is with a team full of superstars and number one options, there, there is only, only one ball. ball. As, a, As result, a result, you have a lot, have of, possessions a lot of possessions that end in ISO ball. ball. I, just I just mentioned how Embiid has adjusted, but not, but everyone, not everyone on the roster, on the roster has, has made those, those same adjustments. adjustments. And there are still, there are still way, way too many possessions, many possessions that end in tough step-back step -back jumpers instead of what, what should, should always be a good look for a team with five stars on the floor at all times. And when I talk about being able to work without the ball, you once again see the importance of guys like Drew Holiday and Derek White. Look at this play with LeBron posting up. You have Steph and Booker providing spacing, which leaves the middle of the floor open for Drew to cut aggressively before, quickly giving it up to Embiid, relocating, and knocking down the three. And it's not unreasonable to say, Team USA would have lost the last two games if it weren't for Drew Holiday. Obviously LeBron was the star, but Drew's combination of ball pressure on defense and intelligence on offense continues to prove why he's starting despite the likes of Tatum, Edwards, and Halliburton being more productive and talented NBA players. It's the same reason Anthony Davis has been so consistent for Team USA, because he uses all of those tools that he has and picks the right time. Like here with Tatum on the post-up, AD cuts aggressively, and then has the ability to finish through the contact of the seven-footer. Even LeBron has been a willing cutter. It's just pretty self-explanatory that if one person has the ball in his hands, there has to be movement or spacing coming from the other four players on the floor. And the one game that we really saw USA move and share the ball consistently was against Serbia. And they went on to win that game by nearly 30 points against one of the best teams in the world. That is the film that Steve Kerr should be showing this team every day until the first game of the Olympics. Now, I'm not Steve Kerr, but I'll also be showing film on the Olympics and just the NBA going forward. So if you want to see more content like this, consider subscribing. Dropping a like on the video would be much appreciated. Thanks for watching, like and subscribe for daily updates.